Good morning everyone. Uh, it's been a while and I know I've been promising videos so I decided to take a couple minutes this morning before I head off to work and give you a brief story time with Abby. Um, I have a couple books that people have sent that I do need to read. Uh, I will get to them but uh, I had inspiration for the book I want to share with you which is uh, Christian Britton's Green Rider. Um, I used to ride horses, and uh, technically I still do, I just haven't done it in a while. I used to ride pretty regularly, uh, both English and Western saddle, though my preference is English. Um, I grew up with my aunts having horses, and we lived, you know, next door to my aunt and my uncle, and, you know, I rode as a child, and as I grew up, I continued to ride. And uh, yesterday, I happened to have a conversation with a very close friend of mine who continues to ride. And we were talking about all the things her horses were doing. And it, um, it made me miss riding a lot. I was looking up stables and barns last night where I could start training again. Uh, if I can find the time. <laughs> that's that's the key point. But anyways, enough blathering about that. It reminded me about this book. Uh, Green Rider is a fantasy book um, about Kerrigan Galadian. Or Gladian, depending on how you want to pronounce it. And she's basically uh, a I can she's basically um, a young adult going to school, and she decides to run away from school. Now, before you consider this a young adult novel, it is not. It is an adult book. Um, while on her pathway to go home, she comes across a mysterious green rider and ends up taking over his mission. And what happens changes her life and Christian Burton has written an amazing world and I appreciate it because I like fantasy I like magic I love the fact that she is an ardent horse lover and you can tell in the way she writes horses and the way that she describes them so if you have a love of horses you really enjoy this but there's also a lot the I believe Christian Burton is actual uh, you know she's had both swordsmanship and other martial training and she writes fight scenes really really well and there's a whole relationship plot thing with with friends and and of course there's a semi love story but it's not the focus of everything it's one of the best series that I've read in a while and it's on its fourth book and the fifth book is due out in May and the last book was so intense I literally tossed it across the room and I have a writing buddy that uh, when I used to be in a writing group, we've known each other for 10 years. We've never even met. She sent me an email when we both read it and we both were like, we can't believe she did this to us. It was, it was so good. So I really, really encourage you to check out the book. The link is in the description below, but I'm going to read one a little bit. <clears throat> the creature loomed huge and dark in the tree shadows. It huffed with great wheezings through flared nostrils like some infernal dragon. Kerrigan closed her eyes and stepped back. When she looked again, a horse and rider, not some evil dragon of legend, staggered onto the road. Twigs and leaves fell, fr fell from them to the ground. The horse, a long-legged chestnut, was lathered with sweat and huffed up as, as if from a hard run. The green... Ru uh, it's, it's early in the morning. I've not had my tea. I'm sorry. The rider slumped over the chestnut's neck. He was clad in a green uniform. Branches had lashed trails of blood across his white face. His broad-shouldered frame twitched with fatigue. He half dismounted, half fell from the horse. Kerrigan cried out when she saw two black-shafted arrows impaled on his back. Please, he beckoned her with a crimson glove. She took one hesitant step forward. The rider was only a few years older than she. Black hair was plastered across his plain creased brow. Blue eyes blazed bright with fever. When the two arrows buried in his back, he looked as if he had fought off death longer than any mortal should have. He was of Socorridia, Kerrigan was certain, though the green uniforms were far rarer than the black and silver of the regular militia. Help! Each step she took was shaky, as if her legs could no longer support her. She knelt beside him, not sure how she could aid a dying man. Are you Sicuridian? he asked. Yes. Do you love your country and your king? Kerrigan paused. What a curious question. King Zachary was relatively new to the throne, and she knew little of his policies or methods, but it wouldn't do to sound disloyal to a dying servant of Sacaridia. Yes. 
I'm a messenger. Green Rider. The young man's body spas spasmed with pain, and blood dribbled over his lip and down his chin. The satchel on the saddle. Important message for king. Life or death. If you love Sacor, Sacoridia, and its king, take it. Take it to him. Uh, I, uh, one part of her wanted to run screaming from him, and the other, another part felt drawn to his need. Running away to Corsa instead of waiting for her father to collect her at Selenium had held an irresistible air of adventure that she had anticipated. But real adventure now looked at her with a terrifying visage. Please, he whispered, you are. The last ones died inaudibly as blood gurgled in his throat and sprayed his lips. But, with the, but she thought she caught a breathy, the one. The one what? The only one on the road? The only one to take the message? I... Dangerous, he shuddered. Everything around fell silent in an unex an unexpected hush, as if the world held its breath for her decision. Before Kerrigan could stop herself, she said, I'll do it. She heard the words as if someone else had drawn them from her. Y you swear? She nodded. Sword. Bring it to me. The horse shied from Kerrigan, but she caught his reins and drew the saber from the saddle sheath. Its curved blade flickered in a patch of sun as she held it out before her. She knelt beside the messenger again. Wrap your hands around the hilt, he said. When he did, he placed his hands over her. It was then that she saw his gloves were not dyed crimson. Not originally. He coughed and more blood flecked the corners of his mouth. Swear. Swear you deliver the message to King Zachary. For love of country. Kerrigan could only stare at him wide-eyed. Swear! It was as if she had already looked upon a ghost rather than a living man. He would not allow himself to die until she swore the oath. I swear I'll deliver the message for the love of my country. See you later.